Hi, everybody. I'm glad, you, uh, glad you're here. My name is Pete Forsyth. I run a Wikipedia consulting and training agency called Wiki Strategies. Uh, and I'd like to tell you about a project I worked on last year. Uh, it's a campaign called the Wikipedia, uh, the, I'm sorry, Newspapers on Wikipedia campaign. Uh, and this is a project that was, it was built around a media literacy goal. The idea was to help the general public um, better understand the news sources that they're coming across in social media, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it, was, it was based on research that drew a very clear link between Wikipedia, English Wikipedia info boxes and the search result pages that you see on Google or Bing uh, when you search for a newspaper name. You know, it, 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 it drew a strong connection between the info boxes because that's one of the main sources where Google and Microsoft, et cetera, get their information from. Uh, so the, the general aspiration was to help people better understand media. Uh, the specific way we were going to do that was we were going to build a whole lot of short, simple, straightforward articles on Wikipedia about newspapers, so about smaller newspapers that might not already be on Wikipedia, that are above Wikipedia's threshold of inclusion, but nobody's gotten around to writing them yet. So we were going to create articles, and where there already were articles that didn't have info boxes, we were going to create info boxes. So you know, the, the, the general broad aspiration was an important piece, and then by having a really specific, targeted uh, idea of what it was we were working on, and a specific six-month time period, we thought we could draw people in and, uh, and really accomplish something in a short period of time. So this, what you're seeing on the screen, this is a blog post by my colleague Mike Caulfield, who was the one who came up with this idea. Uh, and then here, this is the, uh, the wiki project that we built on Wikipedia. We built a, I don't know if you know what a wiki project is, but within the Wikipedia world, it's, it's basically uh, a collection of resources for people who share an interest and want to work together on a topic. So we thought about using wiki project journalism, which already existed, but that, was a, that had a more general focus. And this, by setting up our own, it allowed us to, uh, to really focus closely on what it was we were trying to accomplish. Um, and so uh, what did we bring to this project? Well, Mike is a, uh, a digital literacy expert. He works for uh, Washington State University. Uh, and he does work with academics all around the country. He's pretty prolific on media literacy issues and how, they, uh, how, uh, how students are learning about media. So, you know, one of the specific things that he brought was a familiarity with uh, some databases of newspapers, that, uh, you know, some databases on the web that are readily accessible that have a lot of the kind of information that we're after. Uh, what's the newspaper's website? Who owns it? How long has it been around? What, was it bought by another newspaper? Things like that. So, Here's one, the USNPL database is one that's very thorough. Um, I'll come back to some of this, uh, some details about this in a little bit. Uh, and then another one is the Library of Congress. Uh, whoop, that tab didn't load. Library of Congress did a, a project in recent years called uh, Chronicling America, where they generally, they, uh, they partnered with uh, different libraries and archives in specific states to gather a lot of that kind of information and also to digitize a lot of newspapers that are in the public domain. So, uh, so we brought a lot of knowledge about, uh, about that. And then also uh, uh, with myself and some of the other people who came to the project, some, uh, some detailed knowledge of Wikipedia and how it works and sort of how to, how to build this kind of campaign. So uh, I keep saying we. So who do I mean by we? So Mike Caulfield was the, the one who, uh, who came up with the idea and did most of the recruiting. Uh, he also, early on, he, um, he found a benefactor for the project. Uh, Paul and Susan Haar donated what amounted to uh, about $7,000 in the form of, they, they pledged a $25 contribution to a charity called Room to Read, which uh, does digital literacy work uh, with girls in developing uh, in the developing parts of the world. So that charity got a $25 donation for every new article that we created or every new info box that we created. So having that challenge was an important incentive that drew a lot of people into the, into the project. Uh, we also had uh, Amy Collier, who uh, runs a digital learning center at Middlebury College, was an early and active participant. Uh, myself, 
Uh, and Eni Mustafari, who's a, uh, a professor in the computer sciences department at Wellesley College. Are you here, Eni? There we are. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, and so as with, I think, you know, with a lot of uh, projects that go on around Wikipedia, uh, it's a little bit difficult to talk about who's the core team because the edges get a little bit hazy, right? There are a lot of people uh, both in the Wikipedia world and outside it who did really tremendous things to help us along the way, uh, but weren't necessarily, you know, focused on the, the core part of the project. So Stephen Laporte and Mahmoud uh, Hashemi are sitting here with us, so they, they came. I'm going to come back to what they did, uh, but in kind of a late stage of it, they helped us measure the progress. Also, Elaine Raspberry is someone else who's here at the conference. Uh, Katie Caulfield is a student at Western Washington University, and really the list goes on. It's, there's no way I could name everybody uh, because there are just too many people, which is, uh, I think, one of the, the great things about this project. Um, so what were, the, what were the methods that we used? Oh, and this is the slide I meant to pull up for that. We do have on our project, we have a participants list, a team page that, that lists many of the participants in the project. Um, so in order to, to accomplish this task, to get a lot of uh, articles and info boxes created, we had a number of different approaches. So Mike uh, is very active online and on social media. He has a very uh, widely respected blog in the uh, digital education space. So he blogged about it a great deal. I wrote blog posts about it. Uh, Mike was making YouTube videos on how to create uh, Wikipedia articles. Annabelle Rothschild is a, uh, a student, I think, at Wellesley. Is that right, Any? Yeah. Who, uh, who made a couple of videos. Uh, so that's the example I've pulled up here. So a lot of these are just, just their uh, uh, you know, straightforward videos on how to do some of the specific tasks that we needed to do in the project. So we had a, a big presence on Twitter. Uh, and then some news outlets picked it up as well. We were in the Chronicle of Higher Education, Pointer, uh, which is a, a media um, uh, institute at, I think it's the University of Florida. It's a university in Florida. Uh, I may be remembering the wrong one. Um, and uh, I think also the, uh, the Neiman Lab uh, did a post. So a lot, those things attracted a lot of people from outside of Wikipedia to learn about Wikipedia and contribute. And then also the Wiki project within Wikipedia um, attracted a number of people as well from within the Wikipedia world. So getting that sort of cross-pollination between people who are interested in media and people who are knowledgeable about Wikipedia and getting them to work together, that was really the secret sauce uh, that, that made it all come together. The, uh, let's see, uh, we also, several of our participants, especially those at universities and attending conferences, put together edit-a-thons. So we had two edit-a-thons at Wellesley College, uh, two at Middlebury College, one in their Vermont campus and one uh, in their California campus. Uh, there was also a, an edit-a-thon at the Open Education Conference, which was at Niagara Falls. Um, and uh, let's see, oh, and I, okay, I, I also, I, I meant to show you some examples of the kind of articles we're talking about. So this here, this is the East Greenwich Pendulum. And actually, as I was pulling this together just uh, in the last few minutes, I realized that this is an example of one that we didn't count as part of our project because we didn't end up creating a Wikidata item for it. But it's a good example of the kind of Wikipedia article we were trying to create. This one didn't exist before. So you see it's a pretty short lead section. Uh, we have a basic info box that gives you the, you know, some of the significant information about it. You could imagine a much bigger info box that may grow over time. Uh, and you have a substantial history section, some awards that it's run, uh, that it's won, and, uh, and here you see we've got 14 uh, footnotes. So it's not the longest or most in-depth Wikipedia article that you've ever seen, but it's enough to be a good solid foundation that can grow over time. Uh, so here, this is the Wikidata item for the pendulum, and as you'll see, this one doesn't have too much information about it. I don't know if you're familiar with Wikidata, but it has, this is sort of like the, the info box concept, but, uh, but more data focused. So we've only got one statement about this, one, one fact that is known by Wikidata about this, which is that it's a newspaper. And because it's just known that it's a newspaper, but it doesn't know that it's in the United States, uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have, uh, any other information about it, it's not going to get picked up by the tool that we were using to measure our progress. But that's okay. We can come back and figure that out later. Uh, let's see. So as far as our overall 
progress. Our, we did have an initial goal of creating 1,000 articles and info boxes. That was a number that Mike basically just made up early on. No one's ever really done this project before, so there's really no way of, uh, of knowing what was reasonable to expect, but that was kind of an exciting number, I think, for a lot of people. People want to pitch into a project to build 1,000 articles. Well, we ended up building 278. So uh, we're actually really proud of that. This isn't a, it, it's not like there was a, a, an overhead of like a, a, a basic investment in it that then, you know, the, and then we kind of fell short of the goal. The investment was all per article anyway. So we didn't know how many we were gonna be able to create. We actually created quite a few, so we're pretty happy with that. And we also learned a lot about how to run a project like this. And we hope to share that information uh, with, with other projects. Um, we also ended up, even though it wasn't in the original goal, creating more than 5,300 Wikidata items. Uh, so Wikidata ended up becoming really important to our project. There are two reasons for that. Number one, when we went into it, we didn't really know how we were gonna track uh, our progress. So you know, it, it, we're, we're having a lot of different individuals and institutions work on uh, different articles. And you know, we can look through their contribution history, but that gets complicated because they might be working on other stuff. And then that's looking at a lot of different people. You know, there just wasn't any single good tool for keeping track of that. And the more we thought about it, the more it became clear that if every Wikipedia article we were working on was tied to a Wikidata item, well, there are a lot of queries that you can do on Wikidata, and then it becomes possible to have a structured way of saying, here's the article, did it exist in June? Did it exist in December? Uh, did it have an info box in June? Did it have an info box in December? Uh, the other reason for, uh, for tracking Wikidata is just to go back to that original broad goal. We're looking at, we want to be influencing not just Wikipedia, but what's showing up in search results. Well, as of today, uh, Wikipedia info boxes are one of the big drivers in what shows up in a Google or Microsoft search result page. But in the future, it's very likely that Wikipedia, or I'm sorry, that Wikidata is going to be more and more taking over that role, that those search engines are gonna be looking to Wikidata to pull that kind of information. So we wanna kind of be uh, building not just for today, but for the future. So in order to do that, we had to get the information we were putting into the info boxes and also make sure that that was getting into Wikidata. So uh, as, we, uh, as we kind of kind of went along with that, we ended up with, with three different efforts to measure our progress. So uh, Professor Mustafari was working on that uh, with it, building tools in Python, but I think had less familiarity with the Wikimedia API and Sparkle and Wikidata. Um, I was working along with uh, Nick Boudreau and Sage Ross, um, and we had uh, pretty good Wikipedia and Wikidata knowledge among us, but we didn't really know Python all that well. And so when I presented last year at the, uh, the Wikisite conference was when uh, Stephen and Mahmoud uh, came up to me and said, well, look, this, this seems like something that would be really useful for any number of campaigns or article imp improvement drives. We really should have a general tool for it. And so they started working on a tool called PaceTrack, which they just presented on in a lightning talk, and I think is, is just starting to become available for projects to use, or at least it's, it's, it's on the horizon. So we're pretty excited about that as, a, as an outcome uh, partly related to our project as well. Uh, let's see. So I think it's, it's also worth looking at some of the uh, ways that the Wikipedia and Wikidata community has responded to what we've done. So in addition to the 42 people that signed up uh, for our project, officially also we've seen the Wikipedia articles that we've created and the Wikidata entries that we've created, be, they're, they're growing over time. You can really see it on Wikidata. So if we, we were just really focused on making sure that the fact that it's a newspaper and where it's published uh, gets, and, and, and where it's located uh, gets entered into Wikidata, and we didn't necessarily do a whole, whole lot more than that. Even if we had access to what was the founding date, who's the editor, stuff like that, we didn't dedicate a lot of attention to making sure that we pushed all of that to Wikidata. But there are lots of bots working on Wikidata all the time, and there are lots of individuals too. So just by putting those 5,300 records on Wikidata, we've seen lots and lots of them. Again, I don't have a great way to measure it, but if you look at any one of them, you'll see that they're starting to get things added to them. Someone's linking to its website. Someone's linking to that newspaper's Facebook page. 
Um, so those are improving over time in ways that they probably wouldn't be if we hadn't taken that first step of just creating the item. Uh, also, it's really satisfying to see there have been very, very few uh, efforts to delete any of the articles that even our newest contributors uh, put together. And I think that, again, is, uh, is a result of having a very narrow focus. We were working on a very specific one kind of article. Um, so we were able to really communicate clearly, whether it was through an edit-a-thon or a YouTube video or whatever our communication medium was, we were able to give the students and new Wikipedia contributors a very clear idea of what the expectations were. This is how many uh, sources you need. This is what constitutes a good sources. Otherwise, it's probably going to be deleted. So they were able to sort of make those judgments ahead of time and not push too many articles out that were likely to raise some kind of objection in the Wikipedia world. Uh, and I'd like to talk just a little bit about what we might do differently if we were to continue this work or if we do it again or do something similar. Um, I think, as I've, I've discussed with Pacetrack, I think having a plan ahead of time of how we're going to measure our progress is really important. But I think with Pacetrack, we're probably, that's probably just going to be there for us, uh, more or less, uh, next time something like this comes up. Um, also, it would be useful. This, it, it, was, it was nice to have a project that had a clear focus in terms of generating content. So we weren't particularly concerning ourselves with how many new editors are we attracting, uh, how many new skills are we imparting to existing editors, how, you know, what are people learning from it. But those are all important outcomes from something like this as well. So it would be nice to have a way of measuring both things, how much content is being generated and also what's the, what's the learning and community impact of the campaign. Uh, it also, uh, one of the things that we did is we had, uh, we had especially new contributors and, and experienced contributors in some cases too, working in draft space. So they were creating drafts on Wikipedia and only as you build it up enough to where you think it's ready to go, do you push it out and publish it as a regular Wikipedia page. And, uh, and that was very effective. That was, that was another thing that made it possible to not have a lot of articles deleted or have a lot of arguments about whether it should be on Wikipedia. But in hindsight, we ended up, when we finished the project, there were a few hundred drafts uh, that were left behind. And, uh, and you know, so then it's just up to individual contributors to go back and work on it and try to push it out. And some of those, maybe there aren't enough sources. Maybe it's never really going to be ready for a Wikipedia article. Other ones, maybe it just takes uh, 20 minutes of going back to it and, and polishing it up to publish it. And we didn't have a plan for how we were going to go back and make the most out of that. So that's something else. I would do differently on a, uh, if running this again. Um, and I think uh, also now that we've accomplished as much as we did with a pretty bare bones uh, funding approach, I think, you know, I think being able to demonstrate some success, I think seeking out some funding and attaching that to a target would be a good thing to explore. Uh, there are organizations that, like the Credibility Co Coalition is a good example, that, um, you know, that, that care about the same goals that this project had. Uh, and also, if you were to do something modeled on this in a completely different area, apart from media, uh, there, there, there's often philanthropic uh, money available for stuff like that. And I think one of the things that you might do with that is, uh, is have one or two uh, paid contributors who are accountable to uh, certain aspects of the project, and that might make some of these challenges that we had around the edges a little bit easier to overcome. Uh, and then finally, uh, again, this could be tied to a sort of a, a leveled up campaign is, uh, you know, we had lots of different kinds of people working in different venues. And in a way, that was a big strength. It meant that individuals were very autonomous and able to work on what interested them. They didn't have to worry too much about coordinating with other people. But it also led to a sort of a, a very loose community that didn't feel very strongly connected to each other. So I think it might be good to have like a, a newsletter or some kind of periodic communication that helps people see what's going on beyond what they're working on and how their work fits in with everybody else's. So uh, that's basically what I wanted to present to you now. I think that leaves about 10 minutes if we have questions. Uh, it was a six month, the, so the question is how long the project took. It was a six month period, um, and we really didn't do uh, extensive, I mean, it kind of grew out of Mike's work. He was sort of dabbling in these areas anyway. 
Uh, but it wasn't like there was a major planning stage before that and a major like debrief and reporting or anything after that. So basically six months. In the back, David? Stage, which is a very similar difficulty, is local magazines. Yeah. Same story. Local magazines. Yeah, so that's something that we um, that we encountered a, a, a number of steps along the way is 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 with this very narrow, intentionally narrow uh, goal that we set for ourselves, we were continually running into people who were very excited about our work and wondered if we could extend in this area. Why is it only US newspapers? Doesn't the rest of the world matter? Why is it only newspapers, not magazines? Or what about scholarly journals? Uh, and and you know, I, I, I would hope that, that there's a good opportunity to build in all of those directions uh, and hopefully having had something that's kind of narrow and focused means that, there, that it's easier to sort of figure out what the lessons are and then build in another direction. Yes? Um, yeah, what about things like daily mail and things that we consider a little bit to be like a little shady? And also, if you refresh that item, you'll notice I edited it while you're talking about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, excellent. The, this, this one right here? Very good. All right, American newspaper. Cool. <laughs> so the question was, what about the Daily Mail? The Daily Mail is a is a particularly compelling example, I think, for Wikipedians. Uh, I don't if, if if you don't know, there was a about I think about two years ago, uh, Wikipedia editors had a discussion and essentially de decided that in most cases the Daily Mail is something that we should not consider a reliable source. That there there have been too many incidents where its reporting was biased or inaccurate, uh, and we don't want to. We want to be finding better sources than that. And that sparked a big controversy. The Daily Mail took great offense to that. And instead of saying, "Oh, well, we'll just do a better job of documenting our editorial practices and making it clear what's, uh, you know, what's opinion versus what's news," they instead decided to attack Wikipedia, which I think, to a lot of Wikipedians, was kind of amusing because we don't really pretend to be a reliable source. Anyway, the question is about whether they should be included in a project like this. The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, that, you know, I think anything that you would consider a newspaper, uh, we want to have a Wikipedia article about. And ideally, it really should have, uh, it should have a section. All the reasoning that went into Wikipedia's decision around that, most of that came from reliable sources, from scholarly or other news sources talking about the Daily Mail. So that's all stuff that we could cite in a Wikipedia article, and the Wikipedia article should help a reader form an understanding of, of uh, what space the Daily Mail occupies, you know, whether it's, whether it's good or bad for their purposes uh, in, the, in the media space. Uh, in the back? Yeah. Uh, pardon if you, if you said this in your introduction. Did you limit yourself to currently publishing newspapers or also defunct newspapers? We, this is one of several areas where we actually didn't have full clarity. We were kind of trying to move fast and just get going and get some good stuff done. And we kind of realized a couple months into it that it would have been useful if we had a clearer definition. Uh, what we ended up deciding was that it was just as important uh, to have good information about defunct newspapers. Obviously, it's not just as important in the day-to-day -day assessment of new news coming out, uh, but we did, in, we did end up including that. And that was something we, you know, we discussed with the funder, because you know, they, they were the ones who were kicking in money for it, and they were perfectly good with that. So yeah. Yeah? Something you said in conversation before your talk really resonated with me, and that was that having this up here enables someone who sees uh, something quoted on Facebook or something as being from the East Greenwich pendulum to find out whether that's a real. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So, um, so for, I think, to, to go back into that context a little bit, um, this is one of the things that Mike really had in mind and that I actually learned, it was, it was, it was through my, my following Mike on Twitter and his blog and talking with him that I really came to understand this, is, you know, there was, in. Who knows about the Pizzagate scandal from a few years ago? Okay, so it's most people. So there was this, there was, it, this, this is you know, one of the things that I think is probably the most appropriate applications of the term fake news, which is getting used in a lot of different ways now, right? But what happened in Pizzagate and with several other 
fake stories, you know, stories that really were just not based in any kind of truth um, around that time, is that uh, people on the internet were creating just enough of a shell of a website to make something look like a real newspaper. And in some cases, they were actually buying up a domain uh, that matched with a newspaper that had only recently gone out of business, just in the last couple of years. And then they were, you know, they were building sort of a basic shell of a, word, uh, of, a, of a website and publishing that story. They weren't even going to the trouble of creating five or 10 real stories to make it look. They were just worried about sort of that first impression. If someone saw it on Facebook and they clicked on the website, say, oh yeah, that probably looks like a newspaper. They weren't really worried about the ones who looked into it more deeply than that. But that was enough to kind of allow those stories to catch fire on the internet and, uh, and really have an impact. So that's one of the things that, that, that Mike was really looking to address with this. If you typed in the name of the newspaper on Google and it said it was established in 1940 and here's the name of the editor, then that's a little bit better information that tells you, oh yeah, it's likely this is a real newspaper. It doesn't tell you a ton about the newspaper, but it's you know, the kind of result that you'll get in a few seconds that gives you some useful information. That's what we were really trying to make a difference on here. Um, I think I, I already had a question from you, so behind you, and I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, so um, I don't know if this is a question for Wikipedia or for Wikidata, but yeah. here's where I see the real power of this potential project. One is that, and I'm also wondering, would this kind of result drive more um, participation from the Wikipedia or Wikidata community? So the first is that, for example, it would be really, you can sort of see, for example, um, if there were a way to map ownerships of these different outlets, like, the, you know, for example, large conglomerates versus small newspapers, I can imagine a map that, you know, obviously, clearly, like, with the Wikidata structure, that would be incredibly powerful as a way not just to sort of have these atomized bits of information, but you can kind of see how that would emerge into some holistic thing that would be truly, like, intriguing to see at that sort of scale. Yeah. So I was wondering about that, number one. And then number two, for example, also, to kind of come back to the defunct paper thing, the dying of papers, like, over time. In a way, like, it's very hard to keep, I know, each of these sources updated, um, you know, with people who are volunteering, but what if there were a way to see the results where you could actually see, like, oh, like, here's the, here's the way, like, the number of different outlets have died across, like, a certain, the last three years or the last ten years. If there was a way to see that dynamically represented on the map beyond the geographic representation that you have, I was just kind of curious if, if that would be sort of something that you guys would be interested in. Yeah. If so, can we workshop that on Monday? And can can the Credibility Coalition help find you sort of funds to be able to do that? I have funds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's. That all sounds like really good stuff. If I can just uh, kind of summarize it for anyone who wasn't able to hear, um, you know, I, essentially it's like what what are the different ways based on the kind of work that we're doing that through either Wikipedia or Wikidata or both that we can visualize various different kinds of reporting out of that, like when newspapers went out of business or you know things like that, um, and uh, I think it's a it seems like a pretty open-ended question. I'm not really sure where to go with it right now, but I definitely would love to talk more throughout the conference. Uh, and I, I did realize I wanted to show you that this here is the one major visualization that we really worked on, just to give people who aren't too familiar with the kind of thing that's possible with Wikidata. This map is generated by Wikidata, and every point on the map re reflects, th these are the Wikidata items that we entered or improved to, uh, uh, to Wikidata, the red ones indicate articles that we have a Wikidata entry from, which basically means almost all of them came from that USNPL database, although some of them came from elsewhere. Uh, so, it, so the red ones have a Wikidata entry, but no Wikipedia entry. Uh, the green ones have both, and an info box, and the yellow ones have a Wikidata entry and a Wikipedia article, but they don't yet have an info box. Uh, and you can even, you know, it's, it's nice, you can even kind of see the concentrations, you can see that Vermont is kind of our shining success, that's where Amy Collier is, and they got every single well-known current newspaper in Vermont covered in the time uh, of the project. So we had some you know, various pockets like that. So yeah, so I think this kind of visualization is tremendously helpful both to carrying the project forward and also as an output from the project, and it's definitely something we want to explore more of. Yes, Stephen.
reused by like Google and Facebook and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear what you what you have like learned about how Wikipedia data is being used by other places in the context of like explaining news to the readers. So who else? Is that? I don't I need to answer that question. I think we, you're the expert, right? <laughs> So the way this started is because we wrote a paper where we actually did studies with users to see if we give you a Google search result, what is in this page that makes you think that this newspaper is reliable or not, and most of the times they were saying, oh, but look at this nice knowledge panel that it has. And in the cases in which knowledge, the knowledge panel was not as you know, well populated with information that actually will make the source look less credible to, to people. And therefore, we took the list of the US NPL and said, oh, okay, let's look how many of the local newspapers actually have a Wikipedia page. And it turns out only <coughs> one third of them had one. And so Mike read our paper and said, oh, so I have been trying to get people to Google and do this lateral reading work where you go and you know, Google for the name of the newspaper, and I didn't know that Wikipedia actually doesn't cover most of the newspapers. And so this is why he came up with the number 1,000, because there were about 8,000 sources in the original US NPL, but we focused only on local newspapers because the database has also TV stations and college newspapers and so on. And so there were 5,000 of them, he said 1,000 new ones. But you know, Google, in the moment that we created a page or an info box, within two or three days, it shows up in Google search results. So the effect is immediate because Google is constantly scrolling, like scraping, crawling Wikipedia for this. And there are other people who are measuring this with experiments. So Brent Peck at uh, Northwestern. So he has been doing a ton of work just to see the interplay not only between Wikipedia, Wikipedia and Google, but also Wikidata, because they believe that that's the next frontier. I'll stop here. Uh, well, I think we are uh, we're over time, and I know we have another presenter coming right up. Uh, but I am uh, I am basically done with my obligations for the conference, so I should be pretty approachable for the rest of the time. Feel free to approach me here. Also, here this is my website. There's a contact page on there. I'm pretty easy easy to find on. Twitter, Wikipedia, et cetera. So thank you very much.